And that's good counsel to remember as you go off into this, Brandon. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. And that's something to hang on to. Today is a special day as we'll be setting Brandon Williams apart as a deacon in our church. It was my privilege some weeks back to spend a couple of hours for Brandon as we sat down together at lunch and we talked a lot about what deacon ministry was all about. He has a spiritual background, so he understands all about that. And then uh, some weeks back, we had a deacon ordination council, and you heard the report from them and moved forward with electing Brandon as uh, a deacon. And then we had to wait a few weeks to get past Christmas to get to today. But today is a very special day as we set Brandon Williams apart as a deacon. I can't think of a better way to spend the first Sunday of a new year than electing a man to serve as a deacon. And I can't think of a better person to be ordaining this morning than Brandon Williams. Over the past three years, Brandon and Kristen have become an essential part of First Baptist Church. Uh, last year, we got to rejoice with them as Bryn came into their lives, and we got to be with them as they dedicated Bryn to the Lord. They've all, they b have both served our church in so many ways, and this morning, we set him apart for a new role, the ministry of deacon. In a few minutes, Brandon, I'm going to ask you to come forward, and you're going to kneel on this bench in front of us. Kristen, I'm going to ask you to come stand beside him. You'll put your hand on your, his shoulder to let us know you support what God is doing in his life. And all the ordained men present today will pass by, and they will lay hands on you. Some will speak words of encouragement. Some will speak words of wisdom. Some will speak words of prayer. Each one of them will set you apart in a very special way. I can tell you right now, Brandon, it will be one of the most humbling experiences of your life as you join a group of men who have provided leadership and guidance and service to First Baptist Church. Then you'll take on the role of deacon. And the role of deacon is unique in a church because everything about deacon leadership, everything that really matters is based on influence and not authority. The truth is when you join this group of deacon leaders, you will be joining a group of men who don't have the authority to make the people of the church do anything. There's nothing that says you have the right to tell people what to do. I remember some years ago when I was in Haleville, somebody was asking me about doing something, and they said, well, can't you just make the decision? After all, you're the boss of 300 people. And I said, no, I'm the person with 300 people for a boss. <laughs> because everything you do in spiritual leadership is about influence. It's about people following your leadership because they trust you and they respect you and they are willing to follow where you lead. From the beginning, deacons have been men who were respected for who they were and how they served the Lord. So before we ordain you this morning, I want to take you back to Acts chapter 6, to the passage we read together just a few moments ago and I want to identify four qualities that are essential for a man who has real Christian influence as a deacon in a church. So let me share these things with you before we come to the time of laying on of hands. One of the things that the Bible tells us is this, an influential deacon has a rich walk with the Lord. This coming year, we're going to be talking a lot about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In fact, the theme that I have selected for 2018 for First Baptist Church is simply, If Jesus is Lord. And I'm going to be preaching a series of messages on what is true if Jesus is Lord. What is true in your life, what is true in your church, what is true in your home, what is true in your faith, what is true uh, in the depths of your being. If Jesus is Lord. Tonight we're going to be looking, beginning an exploration of the book of 1 John. Because 1 John is one of those books that reminds us of the depth of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's where it all begins, where deacons are concerned. Before you were called to be anything else, Brandon, you were called to be a man who is serious 
about following Jesus. One of the things that I think is interesting when you look at Acts chapter 6 and you read about the job description that the apostles gave for the first deacons is they didn't say seek out people who are experts, who are efficient, who are practical, although all of those qualities are going to be important in years to come. What they said was, find men who are spiritual. Find men who are serious about following the Lord Jesus. Their walk with Christ was the primary qualification. In the years to come, Brandon, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to give yourself to the church. You'll be called on to lead people, to serve committees, to make decisions, to be a part sometimes of significant decisions that will determine the future of our church. But none of those skills are what we really want from you. What we expect from you is that you maintain a strong personal walk with Jesus. Remember, you cannot lead your church until you serve your Lord. And you will lead and you will serve out of your walk with Christ. As a deacon, you don't always have to please your pastor. Of course, it's a good thing if you do. You don't have to please all of the other deacons. There are times when we have some spirited discussions as we talk about the things that we want to see the Lord doing in our church. You don't even have to please all of these people. But you do have to please Jesus. You do have to seek his leadership as you live your life and lead your family and serve your church. My challenge to you this morning is Colossians 1.10 where the Bible says that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God because that's what he expects you to do second thing I see in Acts is simply this too an influential deacon has a thriving relationship with others the Bible says that the original deacons were men of good reputation in other words everybody else saw something special in their lives they were people that other people not only liked but respected when someone said, point out leaders, these were men that were automatically pointed out. Deacon ministry is first, last, and always built upon relationships. Relationships with God, but just nearly as importantly, relationships with other people. The apostles wanted the church to be filled with people who were respected that doesn't mean that deacon leadership is a popularity contest. But it does mean that those who serve as deacons are universally respected and trusted. As a deacon, sometimes you'll be called upon to make challenging decisions. There may be times when someone is going to come to you and you're going to be trusted with a confidence and you're going to have to hold it to yourself. There may even be times in deacons' meetings where we're going to say, Okay, what we say here stays within this room. There are times when people have to know you can be trusted and that you will provide strong, clear, spiritual guidance. And all of those things will be possible if you have a reputation for wisdom and for love and for caring about people. When your relationships with people are what they ought to be, then the leadership you offer, the influence that you give, it comes back to you. And folks will trust you and follow where you're going. Here's the challenge from the Word. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, I can say to you from my experience as pastor of that church, this is a really good job description of the deacons of First Baptist Church. These are men who live out and fill out that very description. 
And I know you're going to join them in doing that. Third thing, an influential deacon is a man with a transparent witness. The apostles said something that I thought was very powerful in Acts chapter 6. They challenged the church to set apart men who were full of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's really an interesting thing to say. That's a really interesting job description, particularly when you recognize that the apostles took themselves out of the equation. The apostles didn't say, we've been looking We've been identifying, we've been clarifying, and now as the apostles of Jesus Christ, having examined the men who were present in the Jerusalem church, we declare these are men full of the Holy Spirit. Instead, they stood, stood back and they said to the church, choose spiritual men. That means that their faith was an evident part of who they were. The church looked and the church said, here are men where we see the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. You don't go to a person and ask if they are full of the Holy Spirit. Rather, you tell a person that you see the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. The honest truth is, If you or anyone else came to me and said, I really think I need to be a deacon of this church because I'm full of the Holy Spirit and you all really need me, (laughs) that would be my first response as well. My response would be, be careful about this person. Because the truth is, when you are transparently walking with Christ, you don't have to tell people about your walk with Christ. They see it in your life. This is what I think. Men who are full of the Holy Spirit are instinctively Christian. You just do what you're supposed to do. They don't have to remind themselves to act a certain way or speak a certain way or live a certain way. Rather, they just live out their faith in Jesus. And it is evident in what they say and what they do and how they act and where they are. It is an instinctively Christian life. And as a deacon, you'll be expected to live transparently before our church. Just let it show. Just let it show. I love the way Paul challenged the Philippians in Philippians 1.27. He said, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you or are absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. I love the way I heard one speaker describe what it means to be a pastor because I think it applies just as well to being a deacon. And this is what he said. He said, you don't have to tell everybody you know that you're a deacon at First Baptist Church. But nobody who finds out you're a deacon at First Baptist Church should ever be surprised. That's what it means to live transparently. Finally, an influential deacon has a willingness to serve. Acts says that we may appoint over this business... What business? Serving other people. Being a deacon is not a position of status. It is a position of service. And Brandon, you'll be called upon to serve your church. Sometimes you'll serve your church in some very obvious and public ways. Early on, you'll be invited and encouraged to be part of one of the teams that just greets people as they come to church on Sunday morning, just to stand at the door and let them know you're glad they're here. Sometimes you'll be called upon to do things that nobody will know except you and the person you're serving. But you will be called upon to serve. That is the trademark of a spiritual leader. And God challenges you to make service your standard in honoring the Lord. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 
as a deacon, one of the things you're going to find out is there are some things you're really good at, things you don't even know yet. And you're going to be challenged to use those gifts. And you use those gifts to be a, a blessing to others. And together we serve our Lord by serving his people. Just a moment, we're going to set Brandon apart for the ministry of deacon. A man who walks with the Lord, builds strong relationships, has a transparent witness, and is willing to serve. I can give testimony that this moment is not something Brandon has approached casually. This is something he has approached seriously. And I believe God is in this time, this moment, as we set him aside to serve as a deacon. So I'm going to invite the ordained men who are present here today, the ordained men of our church, and other ordained men who may be present. We're going to line up over here. Brandon, I'm going to ask you to come and kneel at the kneeling bench. Christian, you come and stand beside him. And let's go carry on with the laying on of hands. Will y'all come? <laughs> 